basically, my life sucks. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Accidental Beauty. For those of you who are new, welcome, my name is Laura. I post videos once a week, mainly about makeup and sometimes about hair, fashion, lifestyle, all that good stuff. So if that sounds interesting to you, then please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button so you get updates whenever I upload a new video. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter. I've got links to my social media accounts in the description box below. So please follow me there as well. Today, I am going to be talking about my allergy to the most common pigment in makeup. Um, basically, not even basically, actually, I am allergic to a pigment called carmine, which is made out of crushed up beetles. Uh, I think there's a particular type of beetle. I'm gonna research this when I edit and throw up more accurate facts on the screen. But basically, okay, in simple terms, there is a type of beetle that is, it's been used for like, I don't know, centuries. And I guess it's got like a red shell or something like that. And it's crushed up very, very finely into powder and it's used in everything from textile dyes to food coloring to cosmetics. It's a red pigment and it's used in pretty much any non-vegan eyeshadow and lipstick and like, you know, blush, all that. Anything that's red, pink, purple, some blues, like a more purpley blue and some oranges and I'm not sure if it's, it might be in some yellows too, if they're sort of more orangey red yellows. So pretty much like most of the color wheel. Pretty much any warm tone shade, there's a good chance that it's got carmine in it, which is so freaking annoying. You have no idea unless you're vegan or you only buy vegan cosmetics and you'll know how difficult the struggle is because carmine is, it's a fantastic pigment. It gives so much color. Uh, for example, Anastasio Beverly Hills, they use Carmine a lot in their shadows, which is why, or one of the reasons why they're so bright and pigmented, because it's a great pigment, and unfortunately it's not vegan. And unfortunately it's not a super common allergy, but it's a common enough allergy, and it sucks. I discovered this allergy, it took a while for me to figure this out. I think the first time I bought a physician's formula eyeliner and it was a set of three. I remember it was, they had black, green, and purple. And I bought it really just for the purple one. Cause I thought, oh, purple eyeliner is really cool. I have green eyes. It'll make my eyes really pop. So I bought it and I couldn't understand why I was having like this weird allergic reaction. My eyelids would swell up. My eyes would get all bloodshot and they get like all like pussy and gross. So eventually I thought, oh, okay, maybe like the product's just gone bad or there's something wrong with the product. So I just threw it out. Fast forward, maybe a year later or so, I bought the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette, which is one of the best palettes on the market. And it's one of my favorite palettes in my collection. And I used it a couple times without any issues. And then I noticed I was wearing it to work. So I was wearing it for like, you know, a good 10 hours or whatever. And then I was like, I realized that my eyelids would get a little itchy and I thought, okay, maybe the office is just dusty and I'm just kind of sensitive to dust. And then I realized probably about four wears in, four or five, maybe six wears in, a few wears in anyways, point is, uh, a few wears in, I removed my makeup, went to sleep. Next morning I woke up and my eyes were puffy and swollen, I could barely open them because they were crusted shut. And I had like goopy stuff, like pus almost coming out of my eyes. And I was like, and my eyes were bloodshot. Like I was like, what is going on? This looks like an allergic reaction. Like this looks like pink eye. Turns out it is pink eye. There are two types of pink eye. There's bacterial and there is like an allergic reaction kind of pink eye. So I basically had an allergic reaction that looked like pink eye. I was like, this is weird. So I couldn't wear makeup for several days because I was trying to flush all that out and my eyelids were swollen and very sensitive. It was not cute. 
and I was like, okay, what is happening? This is super weird. And then I, so I didn't wear makeup for a few days. The reaction went away. And then I started reintroducing makeup back into my routine. And then I kept, I noticed I kept having that reaction when I use the Modern Renaissance palette. Basically trial and error, I figured out that there was something in that eyeshadow palette that wasn't in my other palettes. And then I noticed I started to get a reaction every time I wore any red shades. I was like, this is really strange. So I did some Googling. Eventually I figured out that I was having an allergic reaction to my makeup, but it wasn't all makeup. It was only these red, pink, purple, warm tone shades. And eventually I stumbled across, I think like some sort of blog thread discussion board where someone said, Hey, I've been having this allergic reaction or this weird reaction to purple or red makeup. I think I have an allergy. And I think it was from that person's post that she figured out that Carmine was the culprit. That was the ingredient that was causing the reaction. So I looked into it a bit more and I realized anytime I wore makeup that had Carmine in it, only around my eyes, I don't have the reaction anywhere else. It's only on my eyes. I'm going to have that reaction. I am currently wearing makeup that has Carmine in it on my eyes and I can actually, I can go usually if I put a base on my eyelids first, I can go about maximum five hours. If I put a really thick layer of like concealer, powder, concealer, powder, like really, really separate between my skin and the eyeshadow, then I can get about seven hours, seven to eight hours of wear without a reaction. And then any more than that, then I start to have a reaction. So unfortunately I can't wear these eyeshadows to work because I won't get home in time to take it off without having a reaction. And sometimes even if I wear it for like, you know, five hours or, or less, and then I take my makeup off, sometimes a little bit of makeup gets in my eye or stays in my on my eyelids and I will have some sort of a reaction, but it's usually not too, too bad. So literally after I finish making this video, I am going to take all my makeup off so that I don't have a reaction. So just so you know, I'm currently wearing the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette, which is the best palette on the market. And I love it so much. I just can't wear it ever because I have a reaction to it. So Anastasia Beverly Hills, if anyone from your team is happens to be, you know, by some miracle watching this video, please consider making at least a vegan line of products that don't have Carmine in it. I would really, really appreciate it because I would literally buy all of your palettes if I could, but I know that I will get pink eye whenever I wear your eyeshadows and I don't want that. And I would really rather not spend all that money for a palette that I can't even wear every day. Yeah. So basically it sucks being allergic to Carmine because I, I mean, it sucks, but it's also made me more aware of what goes into eyeshadows and any kind of makeup. So it definitely makes me a more cautious and informed and educated consumer but at the same time like i really would like to wear whatever eyeshadow i want to wear and there aren't really a whole lot of vegan brands out there that are a affordable and b super pigmented and i i do look at a lot of indie brands but i'm just kind of hesitant to buy a product that you know i'd need to pay a lot for shipping for or i just i don't know much about the products so it's sort of like, I don't know if I want to risk spending my money on something that I don't necessarily know is good. And I tend to like to stick to the same brands. What's really frustrating about a brand like Kat Von D, okay, A, I won't buy any more of their products. Just, I don't agree with a lot of things that she has said and done. So I just, I don't want to buy any more products from that brand. But aside from that, I know she's trying to make her entire brand vegan, but what sucks is she still has products on the market that aren't vegan. And it's like, I thought you're like this huge, crazy vegan person and you still have products that contain car mining. The whole process of like harvesting that pigment is really like the opposite of cruelty free. Like it's really cruel. It's like you're crushing up beetles. Like it's, I don't know if you call yourself a vegan, but you're okay with that. Like that just seems a little bit hypocritical to me, but I know that she is working on reformulating a lot of her products so that they are completely vegan. So I'll give her credit for that. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of like, even brands that have vegan products are all super boring because they have no pigmentation because they rely on Carmine so much for all their products. So like, 
not trying to shade anyone in this video, but like for example, like Tarte, let's say. I think what other brand was it? Was it the Balm? It was some other brand that like, uh, I was on their site or I was on Sephora's site. I was looking at their products and I was like, okay, let's just see what vegan eyeshadows they have because some of their other products look really, really nice and pigmented and people just rave about their products. So I, you know, typed in vegan on the search and it was like literally the blandest palette, which some people are into. That's great. I like some more color in my everyday looks and just in my looks in general. So it was like lots of like muted, like, cream and beige and like very very light pink and i'm like mm, where are like all my purples though like i would love love a vegan purple eyeshadow palette like a completely purple eyeshadow palette norvina is great uh huda the purple one amethyst or whatever she called it um desert dusk like all those are really cool interesting palettes but like not enough purples we need a purple palette and we need a vegan one, please. Uh, yeah, so it definitely makes eyeshadow shopping a little bit more tricky, and I'm definitely more selective when it comes to purchasing an eyeshadow palette. And then, yeah, there are brands out there like Jeffree Star, which I really like his brand, and the few products that I've tried from him are absolutely amazing. I know he's had a shady past too, but I know that he's trying to at least improve his image, and I'll give him credit for really, really trying to see where he comes from and make an effort to appear like a better person. So anyways, I know like he has a bunch of, I think his entire brand actually is vegan and he has a lot of very, very pigmented products that are red and pink and purple and don't contain carmine. So if he can do it, anyone can do it. So um, yeah, this is, I guess, just kind of like a rant slash a PSA to makeup brands that please consider, you know, not having Carmine in your products. That would be super great because I don't like looking like I have pink eye and I want to enjoy pigmented products. So um, that's about all I have to say. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment below. I'm sure I missed something. This is just kind of like a quick stream of consciousness, not even a discussion because I'm literally just talking to a camera and maybe someone will watch this. Um, subscribe to my channel and follow me on social media if you haven't, and I'll see you in my next video.